Whoa. Dunkirk is directed by Christopher Nolan, and this is the story of the evacuation of 400,000 men off the beaches of Dunkirk in World War II. Now, I was really excited for this one, guys. I'd seen a lot of trailers for it. Whenever I went to the cinema with my partner or whoever, we always saw the trailer and thought, yes, we must see this movie. This looks incredible. And guys, straight off the bat, as I mostly am with my reviews these days, my God. This is, for me, already, straight off the gun here, the best adaptation of a war film I have ever seen in my life. Wow. Now, how they set the story in this one, guys, is sort of weird. It is actually set into three different kind of storylines. You've got it on land, sea, and air. Now, on land, it takes over the course of one week over the mole. We've got air, which takes over the course of one hour. And on the sea, it takes over the course of one day but they actually all intertwine to each other in the end and that's actually a really cool and different way of doing this story you've got no real sense of where you are most of the time it actually takes you quite a while to get your head around where the story is going and why this part is dark and then this part isn't dark and sometimes in films that can be done to just bad editing or just bad sort of you know stepping through the film but this actually really once you get your head around it it's such a clever and ingenious way that Christopher Nolan has told you this story that is just completely different to anything I've ever seen before and it's just so fresh and an awesome way to to, have, to make you have to watch every single second of this movie. It's absolutely amazing. You might do what a lot of people do while going into the theatre. You think, wow, Tom Hardy was in that trailer, Killian Murphy was in that trailer, you had a lot of big names Kenneth Branagh, all these people are in this film. So you think, well, I can't wait to see the starring roles, but honestly, there is none. I know that sounds really odd. You've got these huge names like Tom Hardy and Killian Murphy, who, of course, worked with Nolan a lot in the past. But they're really just there to stimulate the plot. They're more there to move it forward. They're not there to draw the big name. You could have honestly done this movie with whoever, Joe Bloggs, it doesn't matter. It was all about the war. The fact that there's these incredible actors in it just made it maybe more of a draw to get people in. But when like the Blu-ray comes out and the DVD comes out, whatever, it will say Dunkirk, but it won't say, you know, Tom Hardy killing him. It won't say the names in the small top bit at the top because there's no need for it. Because you could, as I say, you could essentially have the film without them. And that's just a testament to how good the story is told and how well the story has been written, that you could just have me in it and it wouldn't make any difference because there is no one that you need. That being said, can I just say on the little side note here, a surprisingly good performance from Harry Styles. I know we're all thinking about it, but yeah, actually, surprisingly not wooden. Like the last cameo I saw in King Arthur, which was wooden, this one, really pretty good. Um, the guy can act. What you've also got to understand about this movie as well is it's also a 12A, which is weird for a war movie. It's not a 15 or an 18 certificate like Saving Private Ryan or Platoon or all these other films that are based around war epic things. They're just... it's a, it's a 12A. It's, and I thought, hmm, what are they going to do with this? There's not, there, there isn't the flying limbs, there isn't the blood squirting out of people. But that is also another testament to how Chris Nolan has told this story. There is no need to see how many bits of blood and guts you can see in, you know, sort of like, like the first ten minutes of Saving Private Ryan. You don't need that. I never thought through this movie that oh, I wish there was some blood or something. It, you know? It, yes, people get blown up with bombs and things and that stuff happens, but that's because that's war. But it doesn't happen because let's see how how I can gross people out by someone trying to stuff their, you know, stuff their intestines back in. There is none of that. And I really accepted it really early on that I didn't need it. And it just lent to the story because I didn't have to worry about when's the next big explosion going to happen? Didn't need that. And it was, it was fantastic to see that someone could just lead on a story without needing this huge tagline of something like a bomb or an explosion or something. You know what I mean? There was no need for a tagline like that. It was so refreshing and so well thought out because he could have easily made this a 15 certificate movie. 
but to keep it at 12a and just let the story speak for itself is just genius. It's absolute genius. Speaking of genius, Christopher Nolan got his old buddy to do the score for this movie, the genius, one of my favourite movie composers of all time, Hans Zimmer, to do this score. Now, I am big into my music, if people don't know. I was in bands for years, I played drums a lot, so to hear a sense of rhythm, and this is an extremely rhythmic score, it's almost like the same sort of tension to me as Jaws, but it's very fast and it's it's almost like dun 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 it's like a constant thing that I really didn't I don't think really behind me in the surround sound in the theatre that really let up. And what you also know is well it's been well puzzle size as well after the movie's release that Hans Zimmer actually got Christopher Nolan's stopwatch, recorded it, and the whole you just hear the ticking constantly. It's just tick 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 all the time. So it almost gives you this sense of what's gonna happen next. Oh my god, there's something else that's gonna happen. You just think it's just it never lets up. It's almost an exhausting watch because you could listen to this score in any part of your life and it will make everything just go da 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 what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen, oh my god, oh my god. It needed this whole what's gonna happen thing, which all all you know brings me back to my thing about not needing the guts and the gore because you don't need it when you've got this score to just push you on. Yes, things are going to happen, things are going to get worse, things are going to happen to these people. It was the best soundtrack. You didn't, you know, there was no, like, music, there was no singing, there was no, oh, it was none of that. It was just this constant rhythmic bash, and it was so enthralling to hear. It was so different from musical score, but to the genius of Hans Zimmer, you're not going to be surprised. The man we know can do an amazing score, and this, for me, is one of my favourites of his of all time. To make it actually affect the movie's pace the way that it does is just incredible to me. It is so, so good, and I will happily listen to it again. I want to see the movie again just to hear that score, because it it had me on the edge of my seat. I looked at my partner halfway through the movie, and like she was like this the entire way through because you just don't know when it's going to let up. Is there going to be a part where people are allowed to breathe? There isn't. And I put that down partly down to the fact that, yeah, you know, that this is a war and things are constantly going on. And I also put it down to the score and the fact that that is also joining in with the plot. You know, it's dun, 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 push, push, keep going. It's amazing. I thoroughly, thoroughly loved that score. It is a genius. Quick little side note here, I don't think Christopher Nolan likes the look of Tom Hardy because it's the second film that he's done with him where he's in a mask for 95% of the movie. Poor Tom, I mean, come on Chris, show a little bit of face. It's, you know, he's a, he's a good looking dude. This brings me on to the runtime of the movie. When I saw that it was only an hour and 48 minutes or so, I was quite concerned because obviously you've got Saving Private Ryan, which I've mentioned before, and Platoon and all these other war movies that are extremely long, maybe two hours, two hours, 20 minutes long. This isn't that. And when I went in, I thought, mm, is it going to be that good then? But actually, if you had it any longer than that, I, don't, I think I would have passed out from, you know, just heart palpitations or just something because it was relentless and non-stop you needed it to just stop soon please you know in a good way it was just so it was so the right amount of time that it needed it didn't need any more than that an hour and 48 minutes other or more any more than that it maybe would have dragged on a little bit too long but that was perfect and it's it's just yeah it's exactly what it needed there was no other need to drag any more story elements out they had enough of everything that they needed in the movie that they didn't need to drag out two hours to give you any backstories or because there is no backstories in war there is no sort of you know a guy from you know you've always got that guy who calls himself Brooklyn like they're doing Hacksaw Ridge or they've got this other guy who goes I've got a gal back home I can't wait to get there and put a ring on her finger or whatever there's none of that in fact for the first 10 minutes in the movie there is no dialogue there is no real main character it's just war is war that is what it is, you didn't, it, there is no other way of explaining it and that is why the runtime works so well for the favour of the audience because if you had any more than that, if you had any of these backstories or anything to try and get you involved in the characters, I don't think it necessarily would have worked. 
That is a perfect runtime and exactly what the movie needed. For me, this is a movie I knew I would like going into it and it has not disappointed me. This is a straight up, honest war movie. Yes, as I said, you've got the big names. You've got Killian Murphy, you've got Tom Hardy, you've got Kenneth Branagh, but you don't need them. This is war, honest war. It really is. There is no CGI, it was all practical. Uh, Christopher Nolan even used cardboard cutouts in his far background shots because he is so against CGI. He used real Spitfire planes, he used real, uh, you know, civilian boats, he used... Everything was real and honest and exactly what is needed to immerse the audience into a film. And if there's one thing I love as a movie go goer is to, to feel like I am there, to feel like I am immersed in everything. That is what any moviegoer wants, it's what any film critic will tell you on YouTube or on print. That if you're immersed in this movie, it makes you feel incredible, it makes you feel like you're in there with all these characters, feeling their pain. And really at certain points there is some, considering it's a 12A film, there is some quite gruesome parts in it. You really do feel like, oh my god, how must it, must it have been in the 40s to deal with this? You know, it really puts more of a perspective on it than if there was just limbs flying around. It's amazing to, to for a film to make you come out thinking, oh my god, this poor guy, you know, and you're like panting and sweating after the movie. That is something that rarely happens in film, but when it does, you know that they're on to a winner, and I hope it does so well at the Academy Awards at the start of next year, because this film totally deserves it. In case you've not realised yet, guys, this movie, of course, gets five out of five. I implore you to check it out if you like war movies, if it's even a bit educational for you there. Look up a little bit of Dunkirk before you go. Watch this movie and be enthralled, be you know, on the edge of your seat for the entire nearly two hour runtime because it will not it will not be a disappointment to you. This is a total amazing honest war film. Please guys do check it out. Well, there you have it, guys. There is my review of Dunkirk. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you not think this is great? Do you think it's awesome? You know, I'd love to know. Also, what is your favourite war movie? I'd love to also know that. Mine used to be, I'd say, Hacksaw Ridge. Now, I think this is totally taken over it. This is an incredible film. So, yeah, please let me know, guys. And, of course, if you want to know some more movie news, some more movie trivia, then please follow me on Facebook. It's That Ginger Guy Reviews. I'd love to see you guys on there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next video.